Hey, everybody. I know you're not used to an opening like this, but we do have a special announcement for this coming week. Something's happening? Oh, my God. Yes, something's always happening, Something's Casey. happening. But specifically... August 2nd, something's happening. Thursday, August 2nd. Thursday, as in, like, today, August 2nd? As I, in, I think so. Oh, my it's God. It's happening tonight. It's so big, Spencer. What's happening? Give us the details. Guys, tonight... We're going to be hosting the open mic night at Scruffy City Hall down on Market Square here in Knoxville. And that's right. There's going to be singers, songwriters, possibly spoken word poetry, whatever, but also Beacon House Live. We're going to be there live on stage talking to you guys, talking to each other, just like we do on this podcast, maybe tell some stories. But we would love more than anything to see you guys answer your questions. We hope you guys come and really bust our balls with a lot of funny questions or great questions, kind of like on the mailbag episode. But let's do this thing live. Let's be interactive. Show up in numbers. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Well, they will. At the end of the day, you're being promised local music scene here in Knoxville, which is on fire all the time. You're going to be nothing but great, great songs and and the spoken word stuff. That's always good. And then, of course, the three of us, these dumbasses on stage, shenanigans galore. It's going to be a dumpster fire. (laughs) It's going to be the best. That's right. And and this is all thanks to our pal Brandon Harmon that normally hosts the uh, open mic night at Scruffy City Hall. Uh, Brandon has turned this over to us as a favor. So you know what? If you don't like us, just do it as a favor to Brandon. What do you guys think? Hell yeah. I think, yeah. See you tonight. Welcome to the Beacon House Podcast. Recorded live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that's why I'm not allowed back in the town of Cream Can Junction. <laughs> I got I was told I'm not allowed back in. <laughs> they told me to get out. And I was like, oh, all right, fine, sorry. Perhaps perhaps the entire state of Idaho. Uh, for those of you guys yeah, fuck potatoes. Uh, for those of you guys listening, uh, Casey's kinda of making a reference to uh, a, a horrible thing I put on my Instagram earlier about an unfortunate town named Cream Can Junction. In Idaho. So I'm sure really great people live there. Well, despite the name of the town and Casey's obscene comment a moment ago, it's not an invitation. Do not fuck potatoes when you go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now that we've advised Starting everyone on off. how to be responsible around potatoes, uh, how's it going, you guys? This is the Beacon House Podcast. I'm Spence. I'm Casey. I'm Hunter. And we're here to talk to you guys today. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about? San here? Diego Comic-Con 2018. <laughs> we got to talk about Comic-Con. Oh, well, I'll see you guys in two and a half hours. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Like, when you guys Don't out. even pretend. Tell me about Comic-Con. Godzilla, the king of monsters. <laughs> king of the monsters, I'm sorry. King of the monsters. I was incorrect before. Godzilla <laughs> trailer. Apologies. Yeah. It looks so good, and it looks like they actually listen to me, and they're doing le- more monsters, less humans. Yep. Okay, no, the best thing about that preview beyond the visuals, because the first one looked great, but this was like a fucking Miyazaki watercolor come to life it just blew my mind but the story that it's hinting at is all the chaos and bonkers weirdness of the 60s films that people remember fondly but it looks like it's being delivered earnestly but not (coughs) self-seriously right like balanced so well yeah and i I saw it too i thought it looked tremendous i don't know if you guys noticed but every single monster in the preview naked what does that have to do with anything what the hell are you talking about (laughs) Are you, uh, he's about to get into Godzilla porn territory here. Uh, Just the Easter egg for those uh, what, it's listeners weird, though, that have been here from the beginning. Because I watched the trailer, and they kind of make Rodan look like a bad guy. I thought he was going to team up with no, no, Godzilla no, no, no. and Mothra. He is. Okay, so here's the thing. Rodan, by nature of him being another colossal being, is going to fight other colossal beings. Um, when they first meet up, actually, the, the movie that this bears the most resemblance to is Gidra the Three-Headed Monster, uh, where Ghidorah showed up. You mean Kim, Kim Pora? Gamora? Yeah, yeah. Kim Pora? Um, but no, that, that it's that film, and that film also had Mothra and Rodan and Godzilla. And in that film, they're all just beating the hell out of each other the whole time. Yeah. And at some point, Mothra uses her telepathy to be like, hey. Her? Mothra's yeah, Mothra's a female. A female. Didn't know that. Keep going. Yeah. But no, she's like, Not hey. Not all could kaiju are males. Spencer, it's 2018. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Eat that libertarian cracker right there. Uh, fuck. Why does that have to be a crack? Go back to talking about Mothra, please. God, I... I just wanted to drag politics into it and make you uh, no, squirm a bit. I hate it. 
I know. I'm sorry. Worth no, but yeah, Mothra table. was like, hey, guys, there's this big three-headed gold dragon showing up. Can we please stop fighting each other and wreck some stuff? But, like, for Earth. Yeah. Um, and also, as you pointed out in text to me earlier, the director did say that there's more than four kaiju in the film. There's there's apparently upwards to six kaiju going to be in this film. I'm all for it. You know, Destroy All Monsters is a classic for a reason. Yeah. Um, I, I know I mentioned it to you, but if you if any of you guys that are interested at all, look up the uh, on social media, like images of Rodan that they leaked, like the monarch images from this new movie. There's a red and white one where it's like this tribal design or this hieroglyphic thing. I don't know exactly what to call it. But in the background, there's on the left a monster that's silly as hell but cool looking called King Caesar from the Godzilla series. Looks like a mangy dog. Yeah, it's like a dog lion thing. And then there's Gigan, which is a cockroach chicken almost yep. in design, but cooler than that. But th- those those are both there. That could totally be an Easter egg, but with the promise of more than four kaiju, I'm starting to think maybe they'll show up for two seconds. I also seconds. think King Kong is going to show up at some point. In this. I'd love that. I think it, it might be after credits, but I definitely think it's going to happen. It doesn't take much. If kaiju number five <clears throat> is for four seconds after the credits, I'm happy. Yeah. Godzilla roaring at the end of Kong Skull Island. Just, I love that movie anyways. God, but that and just his plasma breath over. into the sky in this trailer. When he just like leans back and shoots plasma breath into, I'm just the like the way that Grrr. he looked in the water, just like that glow there, yeah. and and Mothra unfurling her wings, and Rodan coming out of the volcano, just like in the '56 movie, yeah, and you know Gazora with his. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pronounce it hurts his name me wrong to say, every time. Uh, yeah, but no, Ghidorah showing up in uh, full shadow. I like that they did that too. They're like, here's the three heads. Here's he's really big. But, you know, this is the one we're going to hide from you. Is he going to be bigger than Godzilla? 500 feet tall, minimum. Really? Yeah, that, that came out, too. But it's how big Monarch is the style. Godzilla? 355. 355? Okay, so this yeah. is the... Rodan's King. 154. Okay, so King Gigi is going to be huge. Yep. All right. Jesus. Well, uh, I, I'll tell you, that the parts in the trailer that, that really... And I'm not familiar with all the monsters like that, but, but there were... The, literally, the way that they have cast up on this movie... It's insane. Okay, Obviously, the obvious, it starts right at the beginning of the trailer. Everybody saw Millie Bobby Brown, who's like Boom. the new super breakout star from Stranger Things. <laughs> but then also Vera Farmiga, um, who is becoming, you know, like a, a staple of, of like horror cinema and that sort of thing. Also, the, uh, Kyle Chandler is still in it. But then the people I didn't know were going to be in it that I caught glimpses of, and I think we talked about this, and I wasn't sure. And now I'm looking at right now on IMDb, Sally Hawkins. Oh, yeah. From... Uh, uh, Shape of Water and Godzilla and Z Zhang or Zhang Z, but she, the girl yeah. from Crouching Tiger, yeah. yeah, is also in it too. So I mean, powerhouse cast like it's Ken gonna, Watanabe. Don't don't leave him out. Huh? Who? Ken Watanabe. Don't know who that is. Let them fight. He was <laughs> let them fight. I'm like he was the uh, head samurai in the last samurai. Oh, I see. Cruise. Yeah, I see him right here. Right. So so I mean, that's just it keeps going. It keeps going. Mm-hmm. I, it's going to be really hard for them to screw this up. The king from um, the. Daddy Lannister from Game of Thrones, who has the coolest, Ooh, yeah. coolest line, what, long live the king. Mm-hmm. Love it. Because he you says know, it, and then it shows Godzilla he's like He's not talking around. about Godzilla, though. He's talking he can't about... Be. He's, it's got to be Ghidorah <laughs> or Kong, like one of the two. He's got to be adversarial in some way. No. Wow. He's talking just, about the king of kaiju, Godzilla. That's uh, Charles Dance. How, why would he yeah. not be talking about Godzilla? Well, because Godzilla has to prove it. He has to earn the title of the movie. I think that's what it's saying. I think that's kind of an Easter egg of... Uh, there's no way this movie's going to come out and not end with Godzilla on top. Oh, no, no, yeah, it, he he is. But my thing is, I'm I'm saying, I think that Charles Dance is saying that about another kaiju to be like, hi, you think you won because you have Godzilla, but here's my big 500-foot-tall dragon. I don't think he's going to be the bad guy, do you? He might... I think that... Because um, they hinted at it in the preview already, but I think that uh, Vera Farmiga is the bad guy. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, it could be total misdirect, to be fair, but the way, because it's different scenes, obviously, but the way that they hint at Millie Bobby Brown calling her a monster, yep. her saying she's sorry, and it was pointed out as a joke, but I think it holds some water of her comments definitely sounding like that of a Machiavellian villain kind of thing. Like she thinks she's doing something right, but in the end it's going to ruin the world. Yeah. Like uh, she's, she's like the Joker. Um, from the Dark Knight, almost in this case, like her Easy. whole thing is chaos has to reign in order to balance everything out. So we're going to let these things go. A lot of people die, but it's necessary. And then the good guys are like, "No, it's not. 
and then I, I mean I don't know we we we, want, we don't know we've seen two minutes of footage yeah with four lines of dialogue but. yeah it's true so it's it's a little early in the game to <laughs> to, to determine any of that um, then you have Aquaman looks so good Sh- James uh, James Wan yeah always does good he did the he rebirthed I think the Fast movies yeah like with he seven did, well no he did like four and five like no he, he did seven he wasn't in four and five or on, he wasn't on four and five are you sure yeah okay sorry. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, no, it's fine. I just, I thought that he like kind of brought it back and made it, made it fun. He made the last one that was fantastic. I can't say that I didn't see Fast Eight. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't well, I like to. the ones with Jason Statham. I think, like, yeah. when I watched the one <clears throat> Fast and Furious movie where it ends with the Tokyo Drift guy dying, mm-hmm. and then you see Jason Statham walking across the street and shoots him, and then calls up, I think Vin Diesel, and is like, "Yeah, we have a problem, me and you." And I was like, "Holy shit!" That's there, number six, I think, right? Was it or is six? It five? Uh, five or six. I don't one know. of those. It's Point being, the way it's it ended. Awesome. <clears throat> I um, love him as a bad guy. Jason Statham makes a real, like, in the mechanic, you don't really realize he's a bad guy, mm-hmm. but literally the entire movie, he's just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's totally a bad guy. And now he's out, like, hunting endangered animals, marine life, this summer in Meg. Oh, yeah. And uh, what's cool is I saw the new Meg trailer, and it definitely looks like... Um, He's like th- this this group of people, like uh, Ruby Rose and uh, oh shit. Anyways, the whole crew on that ship, the whole gang. bring him in, and no one knows who really he is. And he's like, I'm the only guy that's ever seen a megalodon before or Loch Ness monster. So it doesn't look like he's part of that crew. They just bring him on board, and he's you know the Loch Ness monster megalodon. If, guy. if that's <laughs> if if it's if they're going to stray away from the original story, then they could do that. But in the original story, uh, he, he was the guy that basically brought the Megalodon up out of the Marianas Trench. It's Jonas yeah, Taylor yeah. is the guy responsible. Well, no, I think, I think that's definitely going to be part of it. I just think the, the ship, like the crew of that station on that oh, ship, I got are you. hiring him and being like, look, you know Megalodons because you brought it out of the Marianas right, Trench. Right. Come help us capture it and kill it. So yeah, I well, think that's doesn't that follow? Uh, it's been a long time since I read the actual books, but the Tanaka Institute, right? Like that's what well, I thought they were doing. Well, even before the Tanaka Institute, they, he literally the shark came up and they had this problem, and he had to keep going out on these expeditions. And there was always like some rich guy that wanted to capture it and make an exhibit out of it. So like, that's probably going to play into the story. I'm very excited about the Megalodon movie, and I don't care if it looks cheesy. I don't care if it's. I mean, I don't even care if it flops. But like, the hero it in that movie fun. to me, I don't even care about Jason Statham. Mother hero to me is the fucking shark. And, and it I'm looks so great. ready. Yeah, I'm gonna, we'll talk about that coming up here. Like when we, we'll, we'll cover Shark Week, <coughs> we'll cover all that kind of stuff. Um, I will say this about the Aquaman trailer. Didn't grab me much. Why, dude? Hey, let me tell you why. I, okay, and it's not anything to do with the trailer or the quality of the work or the director. I just really, I'm sorry to say this, I just really don't buy Jason Momoa as anybody but Kyle Drago. Look, and that's honestly, that's like his biggest problem and getting work yeah is because that was his first gig like sure. his first really big you know like you know show and things yeah. like that no right. one knew he speak spoke english everyone thought he was foreign and didn't That's speak true. english at all sure. and so no one would hire him so he had to like go around and tell people i'm american i speak perfectly See, here's good the english i like him on talk shows i love when he's on jimmy fallon and they're throwing water balloons at each other like i mm-hmm. think he's like a real big sweet guy i think he's funny in interviews Man. that kind of thing i just don't I don't buy him as Aquaman, and I didn't buy him as the Crow. I heard that's on the rocks. That's, that's, they canceled that. It, he was he was getting too much flack, and he yeah. was like, "Okay, I'm out." I thought he looked ridiculous. Watch the show the Frontier Crow. on okay. Netflix, which I have, to it's be fair. Rad. So to be good. fair, I haven't seen, and I'm sure there's a role for him out there. But like, I don't, I don't know. I don't see Conan him the Barbarian. He was amazing as Conan yeah. the Barbarian. That he movie really is horrible. Conan the Barbarian. I didn't even know he played Conan. 2011 Conan. I can buy that. that yeah. There we go. That makes a little sense to me. And I've seen him in other things before he had like long hair and a beard where he was just acting and it was good. I just don't necessarily buy him in those roles. I don't see him as Aquaman. See, I watched Justice League and that was, he was probably my favorite part because he was, he wasn't the clean cut blonde Aquaman like, yeah, dude. Like he was just, you know, this, this guy, you know, sure, he looked very... Hawaiian. He had the beach look. Um, no, I get it. I get it. I didn't see Justice League, um, but but he stole the movie you from Batman. Totally you broke should, my heart. You should watch. True. It's not a good movie. Justice League is not just good. like it's a every fire. just like every DC movie. Yeah, except hey, for hey, Wonder hey, Woman. Except for Wonder hey, Woman or yeah. Batman vs Superman or BVS. 
You want to drag Spencer out of the they eat shit. I'm out sorry. of the room and beat him? <laughs> and and, after and this. That, that's a great segue to go ahead and talk about this horrible, spectacular no, piece of crap that just hit the fucking internet called the Shazam trailer. Let's talk about before that. we do you that. Should put a before lightning we, sound effect in every time you say Shazam. The only sound effect that comes after the Shazam trailer is this sound. The Bef- sound of feces, because Bef- it is going to be the biggest <laughs> squealing, flying electric turd that streak across the night sky ever to come out since the movie Ishtar or something. Before we do this, hold on. Who is Shazam, Spence? What's that? Who is Shazam? Oh, I see what you're doing here. What tell you- me Shazam's origin stories before <laughs> you tell me that the movie looks like shit. Shazam's origin story, from my understanding, and again, I don't give a fuck about DC Comics, so I, I ran, again... I, I know, you don't. You clearly don't like good stuff, so that's fine. If you think the Shazam trailer is indicative of any type of good stuff, you have fucking Tweety Birds swimming around your head. I think head. there's a Marvel fanboy amongst us. I guess. It's, it's not so much that. I liked other, I just, I liked other comics, good. too. I liked a lot of weird... I liked Grendel. Grendel was one of my favorite comics. Grendel's awesome. And it was R, like R-rated. How does Kevin Feige's dick taste? <laughs> I, I don't even know who that is either. Um, the uh, one running the Marvel lying. movies. <laughs> okay, I, and, and I don't like all the Marvel movies either. And I'm going to say something real unpopular right now. I saw Black Panther. Eh. Oh, that's no, I, I love Black Panther. That yeah, was good. Clearly, you don't have a good taste. But so moving forward. <laughs> what was forward, your favorite Marvel movie? Um, Iron Man 2. No. Uh, I, I don't know that I have. If it's fit. any of the Thor movies before Ragnarok, I'm going to kick you in the kick you in the shins. No, but I liked Ragnarok. Um, I loved Ragn- the first one. Ragnarok was good. I liked the humor in Ragnarok. Um, That's, I'm saying anything before Ragnarok. Eh, I, I didn't really think any of them were that great. I think they were really contrived. Well, honestly, man, the last all great, of them are the last great, 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 great. And I haven't seen Infinity War still, mm. so I'm that guy. But I think the last great comic book movie was Dark Knight. Okay, he redeemed himself. That's I'm fair. good. I'm but, but I'm just saying, I that I, was literally the gra- last great Superman. But I'm talking movie. with Heath Ledger. Yeah, I know. I'm talking the ones after that ate shit too. I thought, in my opinion, Batman v Superman is just as good on a wholly different level. I we'll saw, talk about it later. I eh. saw eh. it. <laughs> okay, I saw it, and like I just felt horrible for Ben Affleck the whole time. I'm sorry. He's a great Batman. No, he's not. And so, <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, no, he is. Yes, he is. I love how the Batman fans are like, yes. I... Well, see, that's the problem. As many Batman fans as there are, there's more Spencers out there, and the Spencers need to buy it. Yeah. Otherwise, but they don't care. Spencer also like the Joel Shoemaker Batmans, which I did. Which one was that? The Joel Shoemaker ones, the, the ones one with, with nipples. Yeah, the ones with like nipples, George, George Clooney, Clooney and Val Kilmer. Kilmer. I did like them. But Those I, have their place. I know but, you did. But the very, I know you did. But I like the very first one, the very first Batman movie that had uh, with Adam West. No, Michael Keaton in it. Was it Michael Keaton played Batman? Yeah, the, the, but, Mr. Mom. Yeah, but they also because it had Jack Nicholson in it, and it was staged as like art. And they had Prince did that entire fucking soundtrack. And I, there's, there's not been an artistic Batman since that could live up to that, even though it was completely stylized for its time. I'd agree with that. Th- there was something cool about it that none of the Batman movies, after that, they became blockbusters. That's something I still Prior want. to that, they were, they, were, they were cheesy. They were real chintzy TV. Yeah. That was the only time that Batman actually was like, in the cinematic Batman was ever art, was that fucking movie with the bat dance and all that soundtrack. Well, and see, like, I want something like that again. I want them to go like just Kim full, Basinger was Vicky Vale. Like it was, yeah. it was fucking cool. Lean hard into the gothic part of it. Cause that's not the a, best that's acting, a, not the best, st- not nearly as serious and grab it. Like as the fucking, like Heath Ledger as the Joker. That was the best performance. Yeah, yeah. You didn't like Batman Begins though? With Cillian Murphy as a scarecrow and no, <clears throat> I, I didn't dislike it. It just didn't do much. Liam for me. Neeson as uh, yeah, Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, it didn't do anything for me. Really? <clears throat> yeah, I, I like liked watching. If you go back and watch Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises back to back to back, like spend a whole day just watch all those movies. It literally is the greatest like five hour movie you've ever that, seen. And that might be <clears throat> true. I just, I'd never have time to. I can't consume movies like that. I have to consume movies along a completely different like. It just doesn't work for me that way. But again, I'm just saying what I came out to. Um, my understanding of Shazam is that there's a kid that's chosen by this... It, my understanding was almost like this tropical kind of sorcery, sort of like a, like a tiki god onk kind of a situation. And he's chosen because he's pure of heart to wield this power and blah, 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 blah. And he does. But like Shazam, it, I thought Shazam was supposed to be literally like uh, able to take on Superman. He was supposed to be that powerful. He it's, is that powerful. He was supposed to be literally the... Um, like the Superman's match in the DC universe. He is. He is. And I just think the way they're handling this movie is a shit way to approach a character with that much credence. He's a child. It looks like DC is scrambling to come up with a Deadpool mm. or a Spider-Man before they're Suicide completely... Suicide Squad was their attempt at a Deadpool. Suicide mm. Squad was an <laughs> abysmal disaster. Yeah. Um, fucking, but 
uh, wasn't David Ayer's fault either. It was the they picked a trailer company to edit the movie. All I'm saying is I never saw it because I heard so much shit about kind of like Spider Man three. Well a never, lot of people I never said, bothered. A lot I of, knew how bad it you're was. You're not missing anything. A lot of people watched the director's <clears throat> cut, which was Dave Ayer's cut. Right. And they said it was great. And then uh, Warner Brothers gave the movie to a trailer editing company who then chopped it up and made it into what we got, which was a steaming pile of garbage. Sure. And I get that anytime, all the actors were great. They were fantastic. Margot Robbie, to get that Oscar cast, winner. You got it. The there fucking, had to Jared be Leto, there. Oscar winner. They had a bunch of. Look at the cast and Vail, how could Vail how Vail did Davis. Suicide? There was a good movie in there. It was the editing. It was how purely the, fuck, the editing. How fault. the fuck did it fail? They had so much powerhouse talent in that movie. And the they editing. Still, they chopped it up and moved things around to where they shouldn't have been. It yeah. was so so many plot holes and like it failed because the people in charge of DC prior to the new regime shift they just did mm -hmm. all the way up through justice league are the same people that knew justice league had a problem because they had issues with director director's daughter died and then he had to bow out and they replaced him with joss whedon all that stuff sure and then instead of going you know what it's gonna suck but we'll push it to march which will give us the last little bit of editing right. and special effects they go if we don't release it this came out you can google it mm -hmm. you can look it up if we don't release it this year and stick to the november date we don't get our ceo bonuses so okay. they shit it right out. And I'd like to say, I cognizant, to I'm cognizant of the fact that any time a movie comes out and it sucks, especially with like a $200 million budget or whatever like that, something went wrong. I, oh, yeah. get, I get that yeah. you could probably trace it back to like the day <clears> that the guy had a second cup of coffee and had to go home early or whatever and didn't edit that. Whatever. If you can find it for free, watch it. Because it's not, it's not unwatchable. It's not good, though. Justice League is like the it's most earnest version of Super Friends ever. It made it felt good to watch, but I was I'll also disappointed. I'll talk about Suicide Squad. Oh, but both of, both of them are clearly not yeah, good movies, but fun to watch. There's literally going to not have to be another episode of New Girl or like Parks and Rec or fucking anything. There's, the day will come, Spencer. It's going to have yeah. to be pretty dry, and I'm going to have to have like not even so, a kite to fly before I fucking go Shazam, watch Suicide Squad. Here's the thing is that I, watch it. I, I've watched a lot of people shit on the Shazam trailer. And I think the one thing people don't understand is that when he uses the power and becomes an, a, like a superhero, a big, hunky, man, manly superhero, his brain does not transfer with that. He didn't even look like a hunky superhero. He just looked like a confused, like, fucking millennial adult. Well, he is he is a millennial. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just saying the guy didn't look like a forward. <laughs> he didn't like, oh, like, it was like watching Big. Mm -hmm. But not with Tom Hanks. That's what they're doing, though. It that's, was like that's yeah. the story. That's the origin story of Shazam, technically. And the humor. The story of I just thought the humor was flat. I just thought it sucked. I liked, I liked it. some of the humor. I thought a lot of it. I, when see, he finds out he's bulletproof, and they're like, they're that. like, they're all excited about it, and the the crooks are sitting there with the guns held up, and he's like, oh my god, I'm I'm bulletproof. You're dead. And then they yeah. get thrown out the window. I was like, that's cute. I also think that this movie is going to be very PG and aimed towards younger audiences that yeah. are going to grow up with more movies now, from DC. Now, I can see it making sense on those terms because it looks like a kid's movie. It looks like, a like something for. you take a bunch of like four-year-olds to see at the matinee <clears throat> and it doesn't show past like 4.30 in the afternoon. Like I, I don't see it being like a... But again, this is coming from the same company that gave us The Dark Knight. Like, no. What? It's what? not the same company. It's not it's the same company. company. You're, no. you're, no, you're talking Legendary and Warner Brothers under yeah. Thomas Toll, I'm talking which is DC. totally different. Either way, they're DC characters. You're still talking right, about Batman. There's Superman, so many different you know. stories within the DC. Like, there's stories where Batman's not even alive. Well, He's and I'm dead. sure we're going to have a similar argument later this year when Venom comes out, and it's not uh, Marvel doing it. It's Sony, and it's whatever. And I get that. I get that different people. But I, in my mind, there are two big comic book universes, Marvel and DC. And I just think that... I'm not saying Marvel's doing great, um, and I'm not that attached to any of the Marvel characters. I do think the new Ant-Man movie looks kind of intriguing. Yeah. But um, it's just because it's got people I like in it, <clears throat> and not not because it's a great story. But uh, it looks like it looks like DC's, and once again, with the exception of Wonder Woman, which was fantastic, I mm -hmm. thought. It was like watching a real movie with real actors in it. Yeah. And it was a great story, and the character wasn't harmed, in my opinion, in any way by the story or the movie. Every They got this breakout Super fucking star to do it, Gal Gadot. I mean, best casting decision possibly ever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, maybe even better than Heath Ledger as the Joker. Who knows? Or Ben Affleck as Batman. <laughs> He's a good Batman. You know. All that aside, Kevin Smith said the same thing. And you know what? I like Kevin Smith, and I like you. I just think you're both fucking quacked. 
Okay, no, here's a... Uh, 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 if if whoa. you like... Whoa, now. Nah. Why is it that you can't be whoa. the one that's quiet? Whoa, now. Nah. You're talking to my assistant. You're doing it Ooh, all... Oh, Japanese scientist over here. Bada bing. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> Yowza. All right. Let's Shazam. reel it back in. So, mo- moving yes, on right. from Comic-Con. What else has been going on in the world, you guys? Oh, man. Just uh-huh. Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> I, if that's literally all no, I'll tell going. you. I'll tell you what. Um, we'll bring it down a level so we can bring it right back up afterwards. A uh, talented filmmaker and artist named John Schnepp uh, passed away Thursday, July nineteenth. I was gonna steal this from you. No, I'm glad you didn't. Uh, so here's the thing: what happened to him was tragic and sudden. He was only 51 years old, uh, just medical anomaly, but it took him. And this is a director of Metalocalypse. This is a director for ABCs of Death. He was on Collider, uh, just Collider.com, all over the place doing film review and stuff. He was the director of uh, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, which is an incredible documentary. Um, But he was taken way too soon, and his fiance and family cannot afford the medical bills that... uh, they're facing now with the hospital hospital care that he was in for like two weeks and then whatever's going to come with memorial stuff too. They have a GoFundMe. So if you go to GoFundMe.com and just look up John Schnepp, it's J-O-N-S-C-H-N-E-P-P. Donate what you can. They're not asking for much. Every penny counts. And, you know, this is, we've all, we've all been there when someone just got hurt, injured or, or, or died out of nowhere. And, we now through social media and the internet have ways to help people that we've never met. And I, for one think that this is a worthy cause. This was a guy that did nothing but put love and joy in the world. Now he's not there. And the least we can do is try to help his family not have to be crippled by something that they had no control over. Amen. Hell yeah. From there, Casey, I just, I'm all bummed out now. I don't know. Oh my God. Ugh. So Meg looks great, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, another movie that we saw a little more of is The Nun, which I'm super excited for. Okay. I think that, that looks good. That, that, I think that looks good. That looks good. Did they release anything new? Yeah, they released some uh, some new footage. You had to like dig real deep onto YouTube. Okay, I don't like, want to. I, I I like that that teaser they did. So Sarah, um, uh, what what uh, not Sarah? What's Vera, uh, 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 Ty, what's Ty, 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 Ty Farmiga or whatever? Well, what's Vera, her sister's name? Vera Farmiga or uh, Tessa Farmiga? I think it's yeah. mother and daughter. No, no they're, they're sisters. sisters. Are they sisters? Really? Yeah. Okay, they're sisters. But her younger sister Tessa is the nun in, or the playing a nun in the movie Nun. Okay, yeah, she's okay. not the nun. No, she's not the demonic nun. But oh my god, that movie! I'm she's just like a, any, she's just like a nun with like a bad. You're shaking score in your boots over there, Casey. Any I can time, see it. Any time that there's a movie that it's attached to the Conjuring series, I want to go see it because totally. th- they've they've knocked it out of the park. Every every one. Annabelle was great. Annabelle. Uh, Creation, creation. Yeah. I heard was better than the first Annabelle, Annabelle movie. Annabelle creation is phenomenal. The first Annabelle the movie. The two Conjuring movies. Whew. When we're talking about Insidious movies, I think they get better the more they do. The first Insidious is my least favorite. The second one is better. The third one I thought was even more fun. Second one's incredible with the lady in black. Yeah. Um, and I heard uh, The Lost Key or something like that. It is amazing. I haven't seen it yet. It's but amazing. Don't even know what that is. It's Insidious 4 and well worth your time. They're also making another Insidious. Like and they they're should. Doing, they're doing really well. I still think the first one's the best, but I do think that number two almost matches it. I only dislike number two. So they're, they're equal in my brain. I only dislike it for the, uh, the metatextual thing that it did with making some of the scares in the first one in context, not scares anymore. Yeah. Which is actually awesome, but then in hindsight, you watch the first one, and if you count number two, you go, "Oh, well, that's just you." Yeah. Which, but that's a that's a weird gripe to get hung up on. But I do agree; they continue to get better. Um, I do have a huge gripe with the end of Annabelle One, though. It's the only thing it ruined that movie for me. Um, I was on board with the film; I love the demon, love the story. Are you talking about the, the, the end? Is where the 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 lady picks up the doll? No, no, the... no, not that's that. You're going too far to the end. When uh-huh. the mom decides to trade her soul to the demon for her daughter's soul is when the movie lost me. Cause I was like, I thought it was the other mom that fell out the window. It was like the, 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 the black lady that had to deal with the demon before it might've been. The point is that somebody traded their soul for Someone somebody sacrificed else themselves for the baby. Yeah. But that's not okay. Cause that was, that was the part where it lost me. I go, this is, you can't do that. One, one, it can't take something that didn't give itself to you. So you're not actually endangering the child Two, 
um, you trading your soul does not negate the other arrangement if we're going to follow the logic of this story in the first place. You have just given another soul to Satan and Hell's army for no good reason because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you, eat you as a snack, and then go get its meal anyways. That's how I saw it, and it pissed me off. I love the rest of the series, though. Shit. Thanks for thanks for making my horror movies into Bible study, Hunter. God. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, not, I'm here to admit that entire point of contention is framed by the fact that I'm Christian. <laughs> I do not contest that at all. <laughs> the first Annabelle had the best jump scare for me is when the the mom is sitting there looking. She's looking at something and her back's to the door. And then she just kind of feels someone watching her. And she turns around and sees the toddler sitting mm-hmm. there. And the toddler runs as the door shuts and the door slams open and it's an like the old witchy Ooh, woman yeah, from the yeah, conjuring. Yeah. I totally forgot. Like about jumps that. on top of her. I literally in the theaters, grown ass man was like, fuck this, I'm out. I gotta <laughs> go to the bathroom, I gotta go get popcorn, something. <laughs> nope, nope, uh uh-uh. uh, nope, nope, nope. Now, Spencer. I feel like we lost you talking about Comic Con. Well, there was another thing in Comic Con that, that came through was the uh, the announcement about the new season of American Horror Story apocalypse Ooh, i didn't and, hear this yeah and it looks like a baby with like the crazy hand on it you know like it's going to be the antichrist or something oh yeah it looks pretty. i don't know how to feel about it i'm interested i'm interested demons baby i didn't see the last season i heard good things so and to be fair oh you didn't anything. it was so okay. uh, cult. it was cult right uh, i where, think so yeah where, with the clowns and it was politics it was and cult. clowns it was cult and even though they it's presented very Manson. well they presented a lot of like sides it wasn't just like the left or the right. Like it presented like a a pretty compelling story of eccentricity along a lot of lines. It was like the super alt right and then like the uh, the extreme left. You know, like um, the Antifa Good. kind of thing. Yeah. But um, and it was basically just about how crazy America is becoming. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great. And it, it again, it felt like it was really trying to jump on these current events. You know, that are kind of like. It, I mean, and maybe that's just me. Again, all these things. I, I want a, a disclaimer for all the listeners before they go, man, Hunter and Casey are like pretty cool and they like a lot of neat stuff. And Spence fucking hates everything. Like before anybody <laughs> thinks do. so. It, I don't, I don't, I just like, I, I don't know. Like may, maybe I'm getting old. I'm definitely getting old. But like the more I just see things that look like they're trying, I'm not <laughs> impressed by shit that appears to be trying. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, why I don't like the Marvel movies. That's anymore. why I don't generally like the fucking media at all because it's it's so fake. Like it, to me, it just always looks incredibly. Well, fake. okay, hold on. Let's stop there. It's not even the trying; it's the artifice of it. The thing that made me quit caring about American Horror Story in the first place. I love season one; it's my favorite. Two was awesome. It's the reverse for me. Like um, I love those first two seasons, but it's yeah. But it's season two was my favorite. But season one was right up there. Now. Season four, I thought, was just, and this, it's not because it was freak show and all that stuff, but I felt like they intentionally just made it gross instead of doing something else with it. Well, I feel like I they do bombed. Think, I feel like it could have been amazing and they just bombed. Yeah, but I do think the send-off they gave Jessica Lange was beautiful, so I want to throw Ugh. that caveat in there. Beyond that, the thing that pissed me off about the series is from season one on, including two, which again I love, everything was the world sucks, the universe hates you, these people are mad. These people are sad. These people are sexually deranged and both at the same time. And everyone hates each other. Everyone dies. And if they don't die, they're going to be in a padded cell. Go <coughs> fuck yourself. Goodbye. And that's the end. It's just mean and cynical and just See, angry at everything. And I'm like, I, I like get that. that. I no, enjoy, I like I enjoy the how negative and how nebulous but it is. one was like that. And then one ended in a way that gave its characters not an objectively happy ending, but gave them an ending that they could be happy with. It right. still came through and said... But there's something better, murder. even if it's murder house and asylum are awesome. Uh, Coven, freak show, and hotel terrible. I haven't watched Roanoke, but I I've heard it. I heard Roanoke's end. fun. Roanoke's a love it or hate it kind of a thing. I liked it, um, but I know most of the people. I love I know found footage, it. paranormal activity kind of stuff. So you I might think dig it. It might be right I up your alley. It. It might, you um, love Roanoke. And I heard and Coven was, was trash. It was or uh, cult. Cult was trash. I don't think cult was trash. It was just like a, like I, I don't know if you're like super into like <coughs> the media and super into like being mad at I mean, the election. If you or, guys are if you guys hate the media and all the election and all that stuff, just join me <laughs> and not caring. Join the cult of Casey. <laughs> like whenever I go on Facebook and someone's like, "Can you believe this? Look at this article." I go, "No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue." Oh, look, puppies. Okay, but see, you you said that you enjoyed how dark and stuff it. 
I do enjoy that. It wasn't that. It's yeah. it's the fact that it's not hard to write those stories based on where they start into that hole, sure. and they just end it in the and hole. That, and they don't do anything. They don't we, try. We agree on that. I feel like uh, I have a problem that they don't stick the landing. Like I'm yeah. okay with it being not a happy ending, with it being dark and nebulous, and it being like these kind of chaotic uh, character arcs and like things are happening, and it's a little mm-hmm. disturbing. Like that was the first thing about American Horror Story that I really liked was that it it kind of zigged when everybody else expected it to zag and it kind of went to these really brave dark places mm-hmm. and like for a tv show i mean i know it's on effects but like <laughs> they got away with a lot of shit oh, yeah. that most shows wouldn't have, would have been censored out but and i like ryan murphy a lot i mm-hmm. like the stuff he does generally um but some of the like like freak show started out it could have been incredible and it was heavily inspired by the movie freaks do you guys know about this movie yeah yeah the the actual one of us yeah one of us the direct the writer and director of the wizard of oz that yeah. was his follow up to the fucking wizard of oz was freaks which is a really good movie actually well if you found out someone had it uh, makes you feel real uncomfortable the, of your the movie. entire yeah. time no i agree i agree because they he actually used people from a freak show there, there was no special effects it was all real yep all that people you see in the movie are real People with deformities or like weird like inbreeding and all kinds of it was, he was all he was all about giving the the person that no one Hollywood would not give a chance a chance right but it wasn't portrayed like that like no. when, back when I was growing up and there wasn't YouTube and all this shit and you heard about the movie Freaks and everybody goes like it was one of the one where your friends would gather around like in a parking lot and people talking about fucked up movies they've seen mm-hmm. and of course you would hear about The Exorcist or you'd hear about like Faces of Death or you'd hear about and somebody would always inevitably go have you guys seen Freaks. Freaks will make you on your skin crawl. It makes you, you couldn't really find it at any video store. Nothing. You either had to know somebody that had a copy of it, or there used to be a particular. I think it was Gemstone Video. Fuck who knows, but it was over here, and like not far from where we are right now, which is an undisclosed private location, <laughs> our secret lair. However, in this vicinity, there was a video store, and it was sort of like near the campus, so they carried a lot of weird stuff. They carried a lot, a ton of like independent movies they cared a lot of like movies that are out of print a lot of like kind of daring and offensive movies they cared a lot of anime they cared mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that you just couldn't find everywhere and they could order it and i remember we finally scraped up enough money like me and my friend and we went and had him order freaks for us it took like a month for it to fucking get there and then we got a vhs copy of it and what's weird is a lot of people gave that director shit for putting those yeah, people it was in pulled, there like because from he, what he i understand like, it was pulled out of theaters people were horrified by it like well, they the, couldn't believe people people were giving that guy grief being like how would you how dare you you know use these people like that and like, <clears> you know make fun of them you know, kind of like probably how to be portrayed today if that was done today sure <laughs> and all the people that were actors acted in that movie all the you know technically quote-unquote freaks were like he gave us a shot like he gave us a mo- like a chance to be an actor in a yeah. movie like don't gripe on him because he Took yeah. a chance with and us. I never, and... I never viewed it as exploitation. I, I, I thought the guy was a sympathist yeah. mm-hmm. to, to the, to the, the deformed people and stuff like that. But it was just not what audiences are expecting after the Wizard of Oz, and it kind of became this nefarious, weird movie. And it actually is a love story. Mm-hmm. If you follow it all the way through, there's mm-hmm. actually like a certain kind of. It's not as weird as it, but the, but the fact that you're seeing this guy like that has no arms or legs, and he basically looks like a worm. And he can like roll a cigarette with his tongue and light it with a match and smoke it with no hands or anything. It's just like crazy stuff. And the shots were real, like painfully long. And anyway, freaks. Yeah, dwell on it. <laughs> Google freaks. But, but season four of American Horror Story was inspired by that, yeah. that movie. And it, they kind of tried to go, and it could have been. And it was not. And it went, yep. Kind of like Coven. Coven started out as this like super, going to be the ultimate like <laughs> witch type thing. And it just turned into Teen Girl Squad. Coven started to lose me with the Frankenstein monster thing that it was doing. And not yeah. and not even that it did, because I thought it was interesting, but just that, eh. Sure. Well, Coven yeah. became Scream Queens, so. It did. It 100% did, and yeah. that just wasn't what it should have been. Um, uh, in fact, I couldn't believe that he turned around and did a, a, a show like Scream Queens right after that. I'm just like, are you, I, I'm just not really sure what the fuck he was. Anyway, American Horror Story, Apocalypse, we'll see how it does. So I guess while we were recording this, Spencer took an Instagram story of us mm-hmm. talking. Yeah. And uh, now my phone has gotten a message from the Jason, Mr. Tur- Mr. Turner, who said that I need, he goes, I'm just sending you this text so you'll read it on the podcast. And I went, what? I was like, how do you know I'm recording right now? And he said, Instagram story, LOL. And I was like, God damn it, Spencer. Oh, I see. I see. I appreciate that about Jason. He's a yeah, he's on it. He's on man the, that knows what he wants. Absolutely. Knows how to get it. 
What, are you trying to do another Instagram story? Shut up. I've got one for you. I've got one for Hunter. I don't have one for me yet. Oh. If Jason saw this Instagram story and then told you to jump, would you text back how high? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I why, love that why about your relationship. I? Yeah. I just, I think it's great that you guys stay in touch. Just the two of us. We can make Edit. it if we try. <laughs> just the two of us. You and I. You and I. I don't know why you guys act this way. Anyway, so what... <laughs> You know, hey, you know what? I, I will say this while we're doing shout outs. Um, uh, I want to oh, give yeah. a, a big, big, big shout out to our friend, our supporter, uh, the writer of our best mailbag questions. Maybe not we're going to pick favorites, but he's my favorite. But if we did, if we did, <laughs> it would be we just picked a favorite, didn't we? Anyway, I'm not I'm staying out of it. I don't care. John Ferguson uh Went and saw my buddy John Ferguson tonight. You guys have heard us talk about him on the podcast a million times. Uh, he's responsible for our artwork, our logo, our branding. Uh, he totally helps us out. He is a constant listener. He is a good friend to the Beacon House and to all the guys that make up the Beacon House. Uh, John Ferguson has had... Uh, health issues. Well, you could say that. Yeah, he had to have issues. surgery. He had to, he's in the hospital right now. He had his fucking gallbladder out, and I saw him tonight, and he was funny as ever. He was resilient. He was perfect, you know, like... In, like he should always be. Just like he always is. He was fucking cool and, and awesome, and I just wanted to give a shout-out again. Uh, John Ferguson, we hope you're feeling better, dude. Love you, Big Ferg. Yeah, totally. Um, as soon as you settle this alimony problem, I'll come see you. <laughs> What's, oh, it's because you're his ex. You, yeah, you yeah, avoid yeah. him like his ex. Okay, got yeah, it, got yeah, it, yeah. got that's it. Right. All right, if that's, that's not an inspiration to get better, I don't know what is even. <laughs> the only thing that could be is something similar to it. Meta humor. Jesus. So I, I got something I want to talk to you guys about. Um, What's up? I want to talk to you about radio. I don't feel like With people Cuba listen Gooding to the Junior? radio. No, oh. I don't feel like people listen... Get get out. Get the hell out of here. Ed Harris was in it too. God. I want to talk about why no one listens to the radio anymore. Do you, do you feel like... I feel like people do. I, I feel f- like people still kind of do, but with podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, it's kind of taken a hit. Like a lot of like the talk shows I used to listen to growing up that were still on you know, just like a year ago. Like what? Like Andy and Allison in the morning. Never heard of it. That's on a country station, but I liked listening to it in the morning, like at 6 a.m. on my drive, because they'd, you know, actually talk about other stuff than just, you know, country music news and things like that. They talk about worldly stuff. Right. Uh, but they, I think they, they're, they're not, I was driving to work the other morning. And I was like, oh, I haven't done that in a while. And I put it on. And it was two other guys. I was like, where's Andy and Allison? What happened in here? Mark and Kim, I think, are leaving from 102.1. That might be a lie. I don't know. They should at this point. Whoa. Zing. <laughs> not, not because of quality, but just That's they need childhood. to do something else. Like, it's a my lot of childhood. People, a lot of people don't understand. Like, these people literally are like <laughs> who I grew up on. Like, before it's Spencer's CDs. college experience. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think he was more in his 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, his doctorate <laughs> program. Yeah. <laughs> According to these guys, I'm like 256. Um, we love every year. Of you. I mean, you're such I'm a right. big fan of prehistoric monsters. Back when I used to help Thomas Edison invent the radio waves. <laughs> oh, you must be one of the settlers. You Is that why you asked him about it? Um, the radio? No, I just... By the, by the way, for the fucking record, I 100% attribute the invention of radio not to Edison, but to Tesla. Just get that out of the way. Yeah. Absolutely. And also not the Tesla that you see now that's associated with fucking Elon Musk, but like the real Nikolai Tesla and the beautiful story that was his life. Thanks. Yeah, it's because Thomas the Edison is a thief. I, I <laughs> believe a so, thief. too. <laughs> He's a thief in the night. Um, Boy, he, he shocked the shit out of horses and elephants to try to prove Tesla wrong. He do we killed know animals. He okay. killed animals. He You're going to get sued for libel no, and slander. He took a car battery with two metal bars, went on an animal's head and killed it, and went, that's what Nikolai Tesla's stuff is going to do to you if you allow While us. presenting ourselves as the Beacon House Podcast Live, Spencer and Hunter do not support the views of Casey. Casey's <laughs> views are his own and yeah. do not reflect that of the parent company. The view of the speaker does not necessarily <laughs> represent the view of the station. <laughs> I hope you could hear the click. He pushed my microphone into my face. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, well, clearly, that, you don't want to talk about radio. So you well, just no, cut no, that no, no. I fine. actually, I, I will say this: I never listened to radio shows when radio was prevalent. Uh, like, oh. I would, I would turn the radio on, cycle through it. I usually got annoyed with it because too many commercials. And so then, when I had like an iPod or Spotify, like now, it was an obvious go to because I'm sick of hearing like commercials for car dealerships or something Jason in the middle. Farish, the dealer for the people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shit like that. Um, but that said, that said, and if I want to hear people talking about things on the way to work, I do listen to a podcast. Yeah, That's absolutely. when I got into podcasts, but I was never inspired by radio. 
I will say this. Um, lately, I think radio has had a little bit of a renaissance because now a lot of the radio stations also stream digitally on the internet. They stream on Spotify. They stream on iTunes. You can stream from their website. There's all different kinds of sites. So you can still listen to radio on your phone. You can have the mm-hmm. convenience of the phone um, or from an app or whatever. But I, I, will, I will say this. A local radio station that, that I've loved forever. We have friends that work there. Shout out to Oz. Um, yeah. 94.3 has always been not only the biggest supporter of local music, but, but <coughs> one of the best stations in town. And I, I have a thing. A lot of times if I'm driving around in town and my phone battery is a little bit low and I need to charge it, I will turn on 94.3. And whoever is doing the programming there these days, um, I always hear something. <coughs> that I've never heard before. And I always wind up like uh, Shazamming it mm. and looking it up on Spotify. Yeah, I know. Um, You're showing their age. <laughs> um, uh, what do you guys use? Soundhound? No, just the Shazam of it all. I see. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. I, I'm sorry. It's but just... I always fucking hear some cool new band <clears throat> that I've never heard before. And I've got an entire Spotify playlist of bands I just heard on the radio mm-hmm. that were, I was blown away by sometimes two or three of them in a row. And they always turn out to be just like stupid. Stunning new music. And everybody always says there's no new music and music sucks these days and there's nothing good. That's not true at all. But you got to know where to look for it. And again, if you only cycle through your Spotify interests and things that are related to the last band, you're, you're never going to hear anything new. That's why there is no new music because everything yeah. is tailored to you. You need to have the Actually, balls to go seek the, something new out. Yeah, and I will say that the, lately for me, <clears throat> one of the best being exposed to new music that's not necessarily my favorite. Because if I just go bands that sound like this band i'm just gonna listen to metal all day i'm yeah. just gonna strictly listen to nothing but metal but like on that radio station i hear i've heard like a bunch of cool bands that are just a little outside of what i would gravitate towards and i wound up loving them so i actually owe a lot to radio for exposing me to things you know um i think 94.3 is fantastic and i went on I, I put that on facebook i went on their website and i was like you guys are. didn't they just killing. do like a big change that everyone didn't like where they went country <clears throat> or something like that no i mean i don't know the, the programming now isn't just like like 94.3 the alternative like with the, where it plays just a bunch of like new metal there was a point in time where i feel like 94.3 played like almost exclusively like creed and <laughs> stuff like that but it's this is not that this is easily one of the most tasteful progressive radio stations i've ever heard in any city and it's some of the same guys. And man, it's awesome. And you still hear some of the class. You still hear Rage Against the Machine from time you to time. You listen to a lot of radio stations when you travel? Yeah. I always search for radio stations in different cities. Because a lot of times if I'm traveling, I'm going to like Nashville or Atlanta. And there's usually a lot of really cool radio stations in big towns like that. Yeah. What do you think about radio and its place in the world, Casey? I'd already talked about it. What I, do you think I about started, radio? I literally started know, this conversation by saying how much I miss it. I just think that Spotify actually counts. Like it, the, the formatting is, and I hate saying that too because I'm a big proponent of like brick and mortar books and that type of thing, like hold it in your hand and the, the, it like listen to Spotify instead of the radio's tantamount to saying go e-reader. But at the end of the day, like it or not, you are getting again it's not randomized and it's not objectively so like with radio but you are essentially getting the same service it's just coming to you through a different avenue but that's what spencer was saying too like where they finally wised up and started streaming their stuff as well which is what they were doing in the first place it's just that it didn't sure. realize people's phones could connect to it sure um that's all it took you know they they talk about um and i i acknowledge that radio is kind of becoming sort of like vinyl Mm-hmm. it's becoming kind of a nostalgic uh-huh. medium. Like, you don't have to have it. You don't, like, but there was a time when that's the only way you could do anything was on radio. Um, I was listening to an article, um, or I'm sorry, like a podcast with, I think, Henry Rollins. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, like, you know, back in the day, there was no Spotify, there was no YouTube, there was no social media. Like, like literally all your exposure had to come through the radio. And if you, and your radio station was like, for lack of a better term, like the beacon house <laughs> of the entire like northeastern seaboard or the town or whatever like that, and bands would drive from all over up to fucking like the a hot station in New Hampshire, and you had to get in good with the DJ. And sometimes that meant sitting up and doing coke with the guy all fucking night or something <laughs> crazy, and he would play your record. And then if it got airplay enough, then you were huge, and you got to go on tour with like you know, it's crazy. Like yeah. Iron Maiden when they came to America relied solely on like trying to pick a song of theirs that could be played on the radio so they could tour in the United States. And it was this huge thing. So there's a legacy to radio that's really fucking cool. Um, I actually discovered one of my favorite bands via the radio uh, growing up was Chevelle. Yep. 
and and Rise Against, both of those two bands I still listen to to this day. Although I feel like Chevelle kind of had a, a low point there for a while, but uh, they they actually just released a new song like last year, I think. And I was like, holy shit, they're still a thing. And I went back and listened to like some of their newer stuff, and it's it's pretty good. Um, I but believe I, remember, I believe friends of ours. Uh, I've been on tour with them yeah. as recently as this year. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like ten years and, uh, would, and uh, Keith and everybody. Those, I mean, they. I I like Chevelle Rise Against and ninety four point three was one of those stations that just kind of like shoved it in my face and I went I I dig this shit I absolutely love it. And ten years they introduced me to ten years yeah yeah. So listen to the radio station every now and then guys put your phone down. I, well, I think after it's, this podcast is over, switch over to the radio. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, finish and, this episode and first. I man I gotta say I'm a, I'm a sucker for B ninety seven point five. Um, Delilah, dude, B97.5. It's not what I want to listen to if I'm like out driving around between bars or trying you'll to. you'll get caught. No, it's because, I don't know, there's a time and a place. But if I'm at home, there's no Where way. you can, won't get there's caught. There's no way I can sell this to anybody. Nobody listening is going to fucking buy this. <laughs> These two assholes are not buying this. But there's times when I'm at home, if I'm just like having a quiet night at home and I'm doing some dishes or something, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to stay up late, but I'm just hanging out with like my cats it may be B97.5, and it's the Delilah thing. It's nice. And I love it around the holidays when fucking Christmas music comes on. Mm-hmm. I have a radio in the kitchen, and when, it, when it's fucking Christmas time and it's going to be Christmas, I turn it on, and it stays on until, like, January 26th or whatever. See, I, uh, I've always wanted to turn, tune into B97.5 just at the moment where Delilah's finished reading something and she's about to play a song, and I just want to hear this right here of her just being like, all right, well, Ricky, I'm gonna put on a little Yeezy for Samantha, like you asked, and uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get turned. So um, just let's let's everybody cut loose and uh, uh, get right fucked. <laughs> it just it just it just you know goes into it. That right there is the opening player of the episode. <laughs> I I also would like to see that. ninety seven point five. Hey, there's no shame in that, Spencer. I enjoy Titanic. <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah, Kate Winslet, topless, sure, why not? And it's PG thirteen. What is it? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, you could show you could show boobs. No, you back can't. Then? You absolutely cannot. How they get away not, with it? Because James Cameron is rich as hell. It was quote unquote tastefully done because they're not being I mean, that, fondled. Well, I mean, yeah, it was it was in an artistic way. Yeah, but the MPAA, we've talked about this before. They have a you know kaleidoscopically confusing set of standards that all rest at the top of this hill made of ice so they can go we can make a whole podcast about how we are real weird when it comes to nudity and sex scenes and tv shows and movies and so fine with someone getting their head blown off but that's that's for a completely different episode that that would take forever to get through all that you know then i remember when titanic was in theaters (laughs) and like like I actually went to see it with like a group of friends, right? And we went out to dinner before the movie, and we had this like really sarcastic fucking waitress. I think it was at like O'Charlie's or something, uh, somewhere, somewhere like that, like medium lamp, you know, medium low class restaurant, whatever. And like fucking, and she kept going, "What are you guys all like? You guys keep looking at your watch. We're like, we're going to see a movie, so we got to make sure, you know." And she goes, "What movie are you going to? See? We're going to see Titanic." She goes, "Oh yeah, really? How the fuck do you think that ends?" And we're like, <laughs> Uh, she's like, why don't you guys see something where you don't already know the ending, losers? And she just totally wore us out. Because we'd been, you know, she was, it wasn't like if rude. We had been joking around with her, anyway, but she totally just dressed us down for going to see Titanic. Did you ever see Seth MacFarlane host the Oscars? Show us your boobs. Yes. Maybe. He actually did a, a song at the very beginning for his opening monologue called We Saw Your Boobs. That's right. And then went through like every famous actress and what movie that we saw their boobs in. And when he got to Kate Winslet, he was just like in Titanic and Goodwill. And he just went and like did like eight different songs. It was fantastic. I have not seen that. I will <clears> I'll have to show that. it to you. Because at one point he says, and you know, we haven't seen, seen Jennifer Lawrence's at all. And it cuts to her. And she's like, yeah, no one's seen my boobs yet. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. So, yeah. Well, guys. If you haven't seen it, Seth MacFarlane, we saw your boobs on YouTube. It's, and at one point he gets the... Uh, San Francisco gay men's choir to come out and sing it like very operatic and it's it's pretty fun. Hey, why does it have to be San Francisco gay men's choir? I don't think it's San Francisco. I think it's someone else. Gentrified this podcast, my friend. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, and on that note, don't expect any sensitivity from Casey. And if you didn't catch the blurb at the beginning of the episode, guys, come see us tonight. We're going to be at Scruffy City Hall. You can tell these guys how wrong they are about the DC movies or how wrong I am about not loving the DC movies. I would movies love to or... pour beer on somebody who <laughs> <laughs> disagrees with me. You heard him. We're going to be there in a few hours. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, give me my tambourine. I'm going to be playing something, I think, tonight. We should paint it green. Yeah, I, I should add to that. There's going to be a lot of people doing songs, and maybe even one or two of us or three of us might perform I'm a song. I'm actually not performing. There's no way in hell you guys are going to get me to play an instrument. Guys, come out and help us drag Casey up on the stage. I'm not it's going to no. happen. No. He sings a mean, mean Bohemian Rhapsody in a group. That is true. Well, okay. And on that note, folks, we've got to go get ready for our stellar live performance tonight. Remember, Scruffy City Hall, Beacon House Live tonight. Come check us out. It's going to go off around 8 o'clock. I don't think we mentioned that, but look it up online. You guys know what to do. Just get out there, drink some beer, be loud, ask questions, okay? But but if, I will say this. For the people that are going up and do songs, let's be supportive of them. Clap. Show the appreciation. 100%. They're oh, yeah. the reason yeah, we're, we're getting to do this. But you, when we go up, you guys can be a little saltier. <laughs> yes. Are we? Is this it? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we're signing off. John Schnepp, GoFundMe. As Kenny Loggins would say, this is it. Love uh, you. As Kenny Loggins would say, Danger Zone! That's not, that never happened in the song. That, that's never part of that song at all. <laughs> Lana. Lana. I'm not going to do more Archer. I'm not going to do more Archer. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>